Welcome back to Women Taking On Sports. I'm Lundy Hollenbeck. We're here today with Women Taking On Sports where we talk all things female athletes, from athletes, coaches, to even women working in the industry. And today we are lucky enough to be joined by the Chattanooga rugby team. Welcome. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. We're really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. Let's do a little quick intro. You can introduce yourselves and what position you play. Um, I'll go ahead. Um, so my name is Bailey Chase. Uh, I am a um, fly half. So that's a, a back position. There are two main roles in rugby. You have forwards uh, and you have backs. So I mainly play as a back, although I also have started playing as a lock or a forward recently as well. So a little bit of everything, honestly. Okay. And I'm Logan Hudson. I am on the other side. I am a lock and I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know how to play lock. Um, I've got a few inches on Bailey, so we're the taller, bigger players. Um, and sometimes I play eight man as well. She also dabbles as fly half, so she's an actual <laughs> lock that will sometimes play fly half. And okay. I'm a fly half that One sometimes time. lost. It was, it was fun. <laughs> and my name is Chris Jones. Uh, players call me Jonesy, and I'm the head coach of the Chattanooga Queens Rugby Club. Well, let's start off by talking about the rules in the game of rugby. Can you give us like a little debrief of how you play? Go ahead. Coach. This is your moment to shine. <laughs> so it's a very uh, technical game. Um, for the basics, uh, for when a brand new player comes out, we're going to tell you some simple things. Number one, you're going to run forward. Number two, you're going to pass backwards. Number three, if you're ever ahead of somebody with the ball, you're ineligible to receive a pass. That's the basics. So advancing okay. the ball requires you to move forward with your feet or pass backwards with your hands. If you start there, we can add on to it. There's also kicking, mm -hmm. coverage, and a defensive strategy that we build on. But at the very basics, we say run forward and pass backwards. Once we add into that, we had like Bailey mentioned earlier, forwards and backs. Forwards play a very integral part of the game. Uh, they control all the set pieces in the game. So for example, scrums, if you ever see the big pile of people in the middle of the field yes. pushing, those would all be forwards. And uh, that happens anytime there's an infraction in the game where we need to reset. And so we will go to one of those. Or if the ball goes out of bounds, if you ever see people being lifted into the air, those are called lineouts, also done by forwards. So they really control the set pieces of the game. The backs then maneuver the ball into open space. So it's a very different dynamic between the two groups. Yes, I'm already confused. So <laughs> I hope I would hope that is not bad. So what kind of training goes involved to play rugby? <laughs> There's um so we we have two practices a week um and we have two hours at those practices um mostly we'll uh, work on ball handling um so for some of the girls that come out to play with us some have played sports before some have never played sports some only swam and have never played with a ball before so we'll do some focus on um, ball handling catching and receiving. Uh, getting the right timing. So when I pass to my friend and we're both moving forward, there's a lot of timing involved in that. Okay. So you have to practice getting to know how fast does my friend run? How fast do I run? How fast do I have to throw the ball? It's, so we work on that at the start of practice um, for, you know, however long Jonesy <laughs> allots for the day. <laughs> um, and then we will move on to uh, a lot of like safety um, kind of things when it comes to contact because rugby is a full contact sport. Yes. Um, so Logan will usually walk us through, uh, cause she's one of the most experienced players that we have on our team when it comes to rugby, um, walk us through the body position that we need to have to protect ourselves mm -hmm. in contact and protect our friends in contact. And so when we go in, we know that we can go in as hard as we, uh, absolutely can. And we're also doing it safely. So that's what we'll do for a good portion of practice and work on the tackling aspect of it. Um, get light reps, um, especially if we don't have a game anytime soon, we'll get some a little bit more like full contact reps in. Um, and then usually towards the end of practice, Jonesy will collect us and we'll do um, what's called, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, the end of practice thing that takes a half an hour. Unopposed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so we'll. <laughs> I was like, what are that you your, talking about? Your favorite thing in the world. Um, so we will then, uh, at the end of practice, we'll um, play unopposed. So we have, there's 15 players on a field or on a side, and we'll put uh, 15 of our players on. And the rest of the players who are at practice, they'll be a fake defense. And mm. so they, they'll kind of be out there to, uh, to be a body, but that we won't do any tackling. And we'll practice. Okay. So a, a tackle has happened. Now, what happens next? And we'll run through all of the things that go into the game at the end of the day. 
So it sounds like you try your best to prepare your players for the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> but when I watch rugby, I definitely have seen that mosh pit style where everyone's pushing each other, but I don't see any helmets. I don't see any shoulder pads. How do you prevent injuries? Go ahead, Logan. <laughs> so injuries always happen. Injuries happen with any kind of sport. But mm -hmm. the thing about rugby compared to football is you're only going to be in contact if you have the ball or if you're deciding to be in contact. Like if you blindside hit somebody in rugby, that's a penalty. You're that's no good. So if I have the ball, I know I'm going to get hit. So I need to prepare myself physically and mentally to get hit. Um, as far as equipment, we all wear cleats. Usually there's rugby cleats that are a bigger stud, um, but lots of players usually just wear um, soccer cleats. And then we always have mouth guards. Um, some of the tight five, like the people in the scrum will wear like a little foamy kind of helmet. It's called a scrum cap, but that's mostly to protect your ears from getting cauliflower ear. That happens a like lot. Wrestling. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah. Makes, well, comes full circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as far as injuries, um, you know, it, you just, it, they happen. You, anytime you step on the field, you have to just prepare that mm -hmm. there is a risk that you could get injured. Mm -hmm. Something we tell the girls often, especially, um, well, not a lot of women have ever done full contact before. So right. um, we tell them to, if you're going to go into it, go in hard. Um, you know, when we go into a full contact situation, especially if it's a girl's first game, we walk them through, you know, the body position that you want to have and, and all the things we can do to prepare them ahead of time. Once the whistle blows and it starts, usually that, you know, kind of goes out, out the head. <laughs> um, so they'll completely forget but um, the mantra really is once you have the ball, go hard. Do not stop until someone puts you to the ground. It, that is always what is safest for you and what is safest for the person tackling you. So. Right. Have either of you sustained any bad injuries from playing rugby? I have a few concussions. Um, a few? Yeah, I've played <laughs> since I was 15, so mm -hmm. they happen okay. every now and then, but it's been a while. Touch wood. Yeah. That's not wood. <laughs> no, touching my wood head. somewhere <laughs> that I don't get another one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've like hyperextended in my elbow, pulled my groin, things like that, but nothing major, thankfully. No broken legs or anything? No. Okay. No. I have been very lucky to have only, what did I do? I think I busted my eyebrow trying to tackle one of the very first times I ever tackled. It was very not good. I didn't listen to what anyone told me. Um, and I, th I think I hurt my shoulder. I sprained my AC joint because I was messing around outside of practice, like right before um, with we play we play touch rugby with the men's team uh, during the summer. So we'll okay. we get mixture with with them. Um, and I just was completely not paying attention. Um, so luckily, I've not too many injuries um, so far. Well, that's rugby. good. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've been playing rugby since you were 15. How long have you been playing rugby? Um, I started playing in, uh, let's see, like summer of 2018. So that's five years now. Okay. Um, I was a, uh, I actually played soccer at UTC. I was a goalkeeper. Um, and uh, at UTC, I stopped playing my junior year. Um, and then I found rugby and fell in love. So it was like last year college, and then I just kept playing on into adulthood. So that leads perfectly into my next question. How did you all get involved in rugby out of all the sports? <laughs> why such a tough sport like rugby? Oh, it was it was love at first sight. I absolutely I playing goalkeeper. I, you know, um, I don't know if you know a lot of soccer players, but typically they're insane um, because you you're very separated from the rest of the team and that um, you're, you have a lot of responsibility on you, but not a lot of action at all times. And so mm -hmm. I really, I loved the part of goalkeeping that was when it was just goalkeeping training and we're all making like upper 90 saves and we're um, like going hard into someone running straight at me. Like I love the training aspect of goalkeeping, the, and I, I still do love soccer, but the game itself just wasn't like, I was bored. I was standing there. I was like, gosh, I really want to do something. And then I went to a rugby practice and I was like, oh my gosh, this feels like upper 90 saves each and every time that I play. So I um, found it because I was actually on a date and the person I was on a date with was like, hey, I think um, this is no longer a date. Like we're brothers. This is, <laughs> <laughs> there is no romantic connection here, but you're really great. Please come play rugby. And, uh, and I did. And then I went to one practice. The entire team was like, Hey, guess what we're doing this weekend? We're playing a game. You should come. It was a Thursday. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm in shape. I, I could do this. I'll try. And uh, I got in someone's car and drove to Florida on 
Friday. So <laughs> it was, and I was all in. I I was hooked. I okay. loved it. No. <laughs> so you, no hesitation. You just jumped right in. I, 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 as soon as I like had my first contact, I, it was, just, it was so much fun. And mm-hmm. I, I got to be really aggressive and kind of let out some of that energy that you'd when you're just trying really hard to do something um, Mm -hmm. that you get with sports, it felt like that at all times. And so I loved it. (laughs) Yeah. What about you? How did you get involved? So I started playing in 10th grade. My math teacher was obsessed with rugby and would have had like all blacks jerseys all over his classroom. And he just came up to me one day and he was like, Logan, you should play rugby. You'd be really good. So I did. And (laughs) I was really good because I was this size when I was 16 years old. I'm 5'10" around 200 pounds. I was, a, I was a big lady. So I, as soon as I got the ball, I just, I'm not fast, but I like took off and <laughs> the coach it, laughs. So yeah. he must agree. <laughs> yeah, I'm not fast. That's okay. We're, we have other fast people, right? Bailey? She's a train when yeah. she's going, you can't stop her. <laughs> yeah. So I played all through high school and then I got a scholarship to play in college and I played all through college. I played, I'm from Canada. So I also played um, provincially for Team Alberta, and then I did a Canada camp as well. And it all just always worked out for me. Um, what kept me playing, though, was the relationships that I made. So all my best friends play rugby. My husband plays rugby. Um, I'm in Chattanooga because of rugby, and I just love it. You get you play for the game, but then you get hooked on, like, the culture and the community the, that yeah, comes along with exactly. it. Exactly. Wow. The extracurriculars are a lot of fun, too. (laughs) So is anyone allowed to come to tryouts? How does that work? Do you have yearly tryouts and are they open to the public? We do not have a set yearly tryout. So we we have um, kind of rolling tryouts all throughout the year. Um, And by tryout, I more mean we are always accepting new players. Um, And then the selections for who is going to play in the game will usually happen uh, kind of the week um, of the game. And the coaches are always paying attention to um, you know, who they're seeing at practice, what who's developing and and who is ready to step mm-hmm. on the field and be in contact. Um, and so those decisions are made about the week of the game. We are always accepting new players. We've had girls uh, come in, I mean, with just a game left in our season. And that that is a really tough time to come in when we're getting mm-hmm. close to like championship time and there's a whole tournament that we prepare for. But we are still always if the if the players are willing to kind of sit and and help us get through our unopposed when we're like we're getting into nitty gritty rugby stuff and we Mm -hmm. might not have the time to you know spend 30 minutes on tackling practice Mm -hmm. if they're willing to still come and learn we are always excited to have them so if someone was interested in joining what would they need to know uh that we practice at montague park Mm -hmm. um so the sculpture fields um Wherever the sculptures are, if you go across the grassy hill, the, the really tall one, there's a, a parking lot and a, a rugby field. We are there every Tuesday and Thursday uh, from 630 to 830. Uh, in the summertime, we'll be there playing touch. They'll see men and women out there um, and we'll be there practicing and running around and just trying to get fit in the heat, <laughs> trying to convince ourselves to run around more. Um, and then typically we'll go in um, social afterwards. We'll go. There's a variety of bars around the area oh, that support the men and women's team. So we'll go and have a beer or two um, afterwards just to catch up. Um, and we're that's pretty much year round. It's six, <laughs> 630 yeah. to 830 <laughs> Tuesday and Thursday at Montague Field. There you go. Sounds like fun. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about your season. I understand that your season this year won't start until August of 2023. So how did you all do before that? Um, we had a tough season. We went one and four, or no, one and three. Yeah. Yeah, one and three. So we won against Nashville, mm-hmm. and then unfortunately we lost to Memphis, Lanyap, and Knoxville. Awesome. Um, Knoxville just won the national championship there on the weekend, beast. though. So they are, they're <laughs> so good. I'd rather lose to a winner than lose to a winner. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, definitely good for you guys. Yeah, so we had uh, we had so many new people this year, so it was definitely a growing and building year for us. Um, and we also raised a ton of money um, mm-hmm. off the field, so we were able to get new jerseys, there a you sweet go. new camera. So we definitely experienced growth in other areas. Maybe As a not, club. Yeah, yeah, maybe not the winning side, yeah. <laughs> but we're hoping for next season to be a bit more competitive in the in the league. Exactly. And you said that you picked up new players. Mm-hmm. So that means that you're format, formatting a new team. And that's going to take some practice. So next year, we can probably expect that team to be a little bit more united. Always. 
Yeah, we um, with with rugby and with it being kind of adults, we have girls that will come in and maybe they're moving and jobs change and, you know, someone has a family, mm-hmm. or someone has an injury. So um, we have a, a really good core team, but the numbers are always kind of changing. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll fluctuate. But I think the Queens program, this is this was our second uh, full year. So our first um, full year was whatever year that was back. Um, and we actually ended, came in second in the league okay. behind Knoxville, the Good job. national champions, yeah. the big dogs. And, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, this year we came in third yeah. um, behind uh, Knoxville and that second Memphis. Memphis. No. Um, and so even though we went down a spot, the Queens program itself is, the, you know, is just continuing to get stronger. We have more and more girls interested. Uh, we had more subs, um, great numbers at practice. So I think we're we're only going to keep going up. Um, in terms of the program. Yeah, the Queens, we've uh, vastly grown in terms of numbers. Uh, we went from my first year, some practices, it was like maybe 13 people there. We have over 40 people sipped and registered through the insurance wow. program. And of those 40 people, it's usually a rolling cast of numbers. So uh, this year we've had to redefine how we did something. So we have uh, two assistant coaches as well. So brand new players come out. There's always a friendly face that'll pull you to the side. So if the team is working a little further, more advanced skills, there's a safe and organized place for them to develop and get up to pace with the rest of the team so they can join in. Uh, We've also been able to breach out to accommodate for the newer numbers. So, you know, when you're only training 13 to 15 people or something like that, it was very easy to have very concise well rep practices when you're talking 40 you have to find a way to carve out practice to be more meaningful to accommodate a larger group of people and uh, as bailey mentioned earlier with that larger group of new people we have a lot of green people that have fallen in love with the game they're still green but they're 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 becoming very experienced they've they've experienced now their first bit of contact their first bit of oh this is game pace this is when i need to make the decision and the years to come following with these new people i'm i'm so excited to work to mm-hmm. fill them into the roster and how they're going to lift the team up even further. Yes, very exciting. So we know, do we know when the first match will be in August? Has that information been released yet? We are, pro- I think we'll probably set that a little bit more deep uh, into the Closer summer. Closer to, mm-hmm. okay. Um, it'll, we have a, a match secretary, uh, Corinne Priest, she'll reach out to the other match secretaries of the other okay. team and they'll line it up um, and have pretty much our whole schedule set before the end of the summer. Yeah. Well, maybe we can have you guys back closer to season start and definitely want to have you back to know how that season opener goes. Well, another question I have for you is I'm curious if you all feel a sense of pride playing your sport. Uh, absolutely. I love telling people that I play rugby. It's um, it's not a common thing. I love everything about the game. I love explaining the rules of it, like the actually watching the rugby game. I find it so fascinating and interesting and fun to play. The culture outside of it, it's, uh, I'm very, very proud to be a queen mm-hmm. and to tell people to, that I'm a queen, to ask people to come out. And even if they don't want to play sports, for example, my wife, she's she loves the queens dearly. She does not care to ever run uh, on a field. Um, but she has found so much joy as well in the community aspect of it. Um, and just, you know, having these adult friendships that get to support us when we move and when mm-hmm. we, you know, need help uh, at the house. It's, it's just, it's incredible to be a part of um, on the sports side and the community side. So I'm, I'm very proud to be a queen. Did you want to add anything to that? I I agree. I've only been playing with the Queens for, I guess like a year and a bit now. Um, I retired for a little bit and came back. I've always been part of the rugby community. So it didn't feel like I wasn't a part of the Queens before I played. But now that I'm playing, you know, I get bruised like crazy, but I wear it like a badge of honor. Like, yeah, go. I play rugby. It's <laughs> <laughs> giant bruises from Bailey tackled me at practice. It hurt, yeah. but it feels good. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I mean, you have so much to be proud of. And just like you both mentioned, it's such an uncommon sport. You should definitely wear your rugby shirts proud and be like, oh, yeah, I, I can play. I do this. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of, oh, there's women's teams? Yeah. yeah, it is such a hence ma- why you're here yeah, today. Exactly. I had no idea there was a women's rugby team and I feel like more people should know. Yeah. Yeah. I really love when especially when I with the just like women that I'll meet and they're um, I'll tell them I play rugby and they're like, oh, I could never. And I'm and I get to be like, no, you could that mm-hmm. we have. And you so, should. And you, and should. You, can. <laughs> you can. It is so much fun. And contact is, um, you know, it's not very common in the women's side, but it's it's a blast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had girls that 
have never played a sport before, never played a ball sport before, have come out and, you know, stuck with a few practices and and realized like how much they were getting out of a full contact sport. Mm-hmm. It's it's so much fun. Yeah. And rugby takes like all kinds of kinds. Like mm-hmm. Bailey and I do not have the same body type uh, <laughs> at all, but we were we we need to be on the field. And mm-hmm. then we've got friends that are five to 120 pounds, but mm-hmm. faster than anything. Uh, yeah. They have a spot on the field too. So it's, yeah. it doesn't take like like volleyball, like a super tall, Mm-mm. someone that can jump. It's Mm-mm. everybody. There's a spot for everybody. Yeah. I mean, we, we got big girls, we got small girls, skinny, large, everywhere in between. And there there literally is a spot on the field dedicated to that body size. Um, it's yeah. I've never seen it before. You know, soccer players all look the same, volleyball players, rugby players have a wide variety and it is intentional and there's a purpose. What we can really hope is someone listening could think to themselves, oh, well, then I can do it. Absolutely. So, Mm -hmm. well, my next question for you all is why do you think it is important to celebrate women in sports? It's there's so much joy in women's sports. Um, And, you know, just like how the men's side gets um, their stories told and, and more, you know, recognition, the same stories are going on in the women's side. Like knowing that my friends with the Knoxville Minx, the journey that they've been on to go from, you know, just a local Knoxville team to the national champions of our league. It's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're putting in so much work. We're putting in so much work. Um, and we have such a great community in sport. Like I, I particularly like women sports with the, um, kind of emphasis on community and go together. Whereas, you know, a I'm not saying any particular men's sport, but there's just maybe a more sense of like, wow, that's a really good individual player. Wow, he's really good. But with the women's side, it's so much more team based. And I, oh gosh, I wish everyone knew about all the joys and ups and downs that go into our league. It's it's so much fun. Yeah. Agreed. Coach, do you have any final thoughts? On that statement, on that question. <laughs> Yes. Yes. The man <laughs> answer Jonesy. Answer Did we talk crimes. about this beforehand? I'm like, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> you don't have what to. What Bailey meant was. <laughs> there you go. Yes. No, I think it's awesome. Um, the opportunities that are growing in women's sports. What I've noticed particularly as a coach is certain aspects of the game that I find different because I've coached men's teams as well. And I think confidence is something that we take for granted in men's sports because this isn't necessarily encouraged in almost every facet mm-hmm. of women's life as they're growing up. So seeing it develop and creating more opportunities for this, you can see a light switch in some of these players and you can tell it's never been available for them. And that's when they really get hooked. And that that alone, you can build mm-hmm. a fantastic program off of. Yeah, it's so much fun to see. I mean, the light that goes off in some girls' eyes once they like have their first contact, it's I love it. It's inspiring. I I live for that. <laughs> well, the last question that I have for you all, is there anything else that you would like the public to know about the Chattanooga Queens? Uh, we're always looking for new players and new sponsorships. So yeah. <laughs> this is a pay to play kind of program. Mm-hmm. Um, we collect dues from our players, um, but to be able to travel and do the things that we want to do, we need um, sponsorships from local businesses. Mm -hmm. So we are always looking for um, people that want to support our team and give us new resources to, you know, go, go the next step. Help us keep impacting the Chattanooga. I mean, greater Chattanooga women's community. We, um, we want to keep doing this. We want to build this program so that it's more than just us. Like we've talked a lot about how we want to uh, we want to retire from the Queens eventually yeah. and have there be a full Queens program still alive and going and, you know, start reaching out to high schools and start building rugby in the community for for women and girls. And um, we can only do that with uh, with support mm-hmm. from, you know, local businesses and support from local players. So. Um, so yeah, that we have a dream to bring mm-hmm. rugby to the Chattanooga area yes. and make it really big. So any support is always appreciated. Yes. Well, I cannot thank you enough for being here today, and I wish you all the best of luck in August. We'll definitely have to stay tuned and keep in touch. I'm Lundy Hollenbach, and this has been another episode episode of Women Taking on Sports for Inside High. Well, that's a different show. This has been another episode of Women Taking on Sports for ESPN Chattanooga 95.3.